Good afternoon. A uh, brief announcement uh, tomorrow. Uh, Secretary Perry will address the uh, uh, Pacific Basin Economic Council at their annual meeting. He'll speak at uh, 9 a.m. at the Sheraton Washington Hotel, and he'll talk about um, preventive defense in Asia. He'll talk about um, the, uh, our security relationship with, with Japan, particularly in the wake of the Okinawa agreement. He'll talk about uh, China, and he'll talk about Korea. And it will be piped back here. Uh, it will be piped back uh, to the Pentagon, so that you don't have to uh, uh, you don't have to fight rush hour traffic any more than well, usual. This is one of our many services to you guys. Uh, I I assume there will be, but I don't know for sure. Does anybody know if there'll be Q and A? This is the, uh, the group to which the President spoke yesterday when he talked about uh, Most Favored Nation. Um, with that, I'll, I'll take your questions. Charlie. Can you fill us in on the latest on the Central African Republic, including how many Americans have been taken out so far and how many they plan to take out, what's going on at the airport, and anybody been shot, and et cetera? Uh, Thirteen Americans have been evacuated so far. As I understand it, there are about um, 60 more Americans waiting to come out. There are a total of uh, slightly more than uh, 250 Americans in the Central African Republic. As you know, we now have uh, 32 Marines uh, protecting the embassy. And um, uh, there, there, uh, there continues to be fighting. In fact, the State Department, in its guidance, describes it as mayhem. I can't improve on that. Uh, mayhem throughout Bang Bangui, and uh, there is looting going on in the commercial area. The airport is closed to commercial traffic. However, there is no indication of threatening uh, gestures or uh, or fire directed at the American embassy in the in the capital of the Central African Republic. Um, that's about all I have for you right now. Why have the 13 been uh, taken out so far? Well, there was a problem of uh, getting uh, French security to and from the airport, a secure route to and from the airport. And I gather when that's, uh, to, now it's nighttime, of course, um, but uh, more will come out when we can uh, uh, work with the French to get a secure route to the airport. These people, uh, these people are not all embassy people, I take it. They're no, other no. I don't know how many people are in the embassy. You'll have to talk to the State Department about that. But um, the uh, uh, there may be slightly more than 60 waiting to get out. It's around 60. It could be 63, 66, something like that, still waiting to get out. Now, we don't know how many, I'm sorry, there are, there are 19 embassy personnel there, including uh, and nine family members. Um, we don't know how many of the American citizens in the capital will want to come out. I think it depends on the uh, duration and tempo of the fighting, the seriousness of the fighting. Bob. In, in a related vein, could you bring us up to date on ships off Liberia? So how many Marines are there and what they're what they're doing? There are two ships off Liberia and about 2,400 Marines. Um, I think there are about 300 and, uh, there are 2,400 Marines in what's left of the 22nd MU. There are about uh, 330 military people um, on the ground now in Monrovia protecting the embassy. Is that, is, uh, are you withdrawing more of those Marines or is there, what's the status? No, of no, them? there's been about uh, 300 plus or minus for the last uh, couple of weeks there on the ground in Monrovia. We have uh, cut back the size of the MU. There had been three ships and there had been a total of 2,900 uh, Marines in the 22nd MU. One ship departed and now um, we're down to a slightly smaller force. My expectation is that sometime in the future it will be cut back uh, to a smaller force still, but that hasn't happened yet. So yeah, you, Jamie. Uh, Secretary Perry uh, apparently indicated in an editorial board uh, with the Washington Times that there have been some, that he was of the opinion or that there had been a finding that Admiral Borda was in some sort of technical violation in wearing these V devices. Uh, could you just <coughs> explain uh, 
in any more detail what technical violation or what is there been any determination or the what Washington you know? Times interview the first of all the story was very complete and um, and accurately reported what he said and secondly it carried a verbatim a section of the interview where he explained this and I have nothing more to add Bill well, has, there been, has there been any determination whether or I have not nothing more to add it's you can read what he said and um, uh, that's as far as I mean I think he spoke very clearly he laid it right out and um, I invite you to use it Despite the clarity, if I could just ask one yes or no question, do we know at this point, is there a definitive answer to the question of whether or not Admiral Border was entitled to wear these fees, or is it still uh, an open question? The Secretary was asked for his, uh, his opinion, and he gave it. But I'm asking, is that, so that's his opinion, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily foreclose other possibilities? I think it's very, what the Secretary said was very clear. I invite you to read it and use it any way you want. Bill? Yes, referring to uh, the SS-18 uh, Russian missile, missiles and, and or technology transfers to China, uh, can you uh, de be definitive, uh, uh, Ken, about whether China has tried to acquire whole entire SS-18 missiles and if that acquisition then would be for offensive or defensive intercontinental missile deployment. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, uh, it was mentioned uh, uh, that uh, other countries have tried to buy SS-18 technology from Russia. Could you identify them? These are statements made, uh, I believe, by Secretary Perry, the Washington Times people yesterday. Uh, first, I, I can't get into a lot of detail because this is all based on intelligence reporting, obviously. Um, secondly, uh, one of our biggest fears since the breakup of the Soviet Union um, is that uh, uh, weapons or know-how or weapons components would be sold by Russia and other former Soviet republics to willing buyers of which there are several around the world. We have worked very hard to prevent proliferation through this method. We know that a number of, uh, as China already, of course, has a, a uh, strategic military force. It's not a huge force compared to the Russian force or the American force. Uh, before the end of the Cold War, uh, China was the third largest military power behind the Soviet Union and the United States. When the Soviet Union disintegrated, broke into separate countries, the, uh, the uh, third, fourth, and fifth largest military powers suddenly became Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Belarus. And as you know, we've worked very aggressively with those three countries to uh, get them to eliminate their nuclear forces, dismantle their rockets. The uh, uh, Kazakhstan has succeeded under the so-called Nunn-Lugar program. It is now it no longer has a strategic nuclear force. Uh, Ukraine will eliminate its strategic nuclear force this June, and the secretary will be there to witness that. And uh, uh, Belarus is is close to eliminating its strategic nuclear force. That's one part of our effort to control proliferation, to dismantle these rockets. Um, we have also been working to uh, uh, prevent, through suasion and other ways, Russia and Ukraine and others from responding to invitations they're getting to sell uh, rocket technology to other countries. Um, as, I, as you know, China already has a, a small uh, strategic rocket force. There are other countries that would like to build a strategic rocket force. It's not an easy thing to do. It would be much easier for them to uh, build ICBMs um, if they got help from countries like Russia and Ukraine. So we've been working to stop that. Can, can you name which of those uh, which of those countries are? Is, is Iran one of those countries that's trying I, to get I, this technology? I, um, I, I don't want to go into details about that. The Secretary has said, um, in response to a Washington Times report that China has talked to Russian and Ukrainian officials about uh, SS-18 technology. I want to point out that um, uh, Russia 
in particular, but Ukraine also um, has a real interest in controlling proliferation. Uh, uh, they are surrounded by many more countries than we are, and uh, these countries are much closer to them than they are to us. So um, they're surrounded not only by countries in Europe, but of course countries in the Middle East and in Asia. Uh, we believe that uh, Russia shares our, our commitment to nonproliferation, and um, it's something that we've discussed with them directly and will continue to discuss with them. Can you be any more specific about what steps the United States is taking to ensure that this technology does not fall into the hands of the Chinese? Well, the first step we, we've taken, the most tangible step we've taken, is purchasing the um, 600 uh, kilograms of uh, highly enriched uranium from Kazakhstan uh, in Project Sapphire uh, a year, 18 months ago. We've also, um, uh, working through the Nun Lugar Cooperative Threat Reduction Program, set up a number of programs to help employ uh, scientists who were involved in the manufacture of uh, nuclear weapons. We've uh, uh, helped uh, convert uh, former defense businesses into, into uh, civilian manufacturers. You may have visited some of those. Um, uh, the Secretary has visited some in, in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, we've been working very hard to uh, uh, make sure that uh, the scientists and engineers who help build these weapons can remain employed in uh, non-military businesses, but remain employed so that out of desperation, they don't sell their services and their knowledge to other countries. Uh, we've also uh, spoken um, explicitly and directly to the Russians about um, uh, sales of nuclear uh, hardware and know-how to the Iranians, and uh, uh, that's been public for some time. We've uh, uh, spoken to them about uh, sales of rocket technology to uh, China, and um, uh, We've made it very clear to all these countries that we all share an intense interest in nonproliferation. Has the United States issued a, a demarche? Yes. In this particular case of the SS-18s, we've issued a demarche to the governments of Russia and Ukraine. Could, could you tell us of when the overtures were made by China to get this technology and... There have been a series of discussions about this over time. I don't want to... Uh, um, uh, Countries have discussions about, uh, uh, about uh, technology all the time. We've had discussions with the Russians and the Ukrainians about, uh, about technology. The, um, uh, so these discussions, uh, I think some of them w would probably be more properly called uh, preliminary overtures, feelers, um, rather than, than hard offers. Um, within, uh, within the last... Uh, uh, 12, 6 to 12 months. Um, has the United States been given assurances by Moscow and Kiev that that, uh, that kind of stuff will not be? So well, we're in continual, continual dialogue with them about nonproliferation. They've told us that they have uh, uh, understand our concerns. Are the Chinese looking for components or, or scientists or uh, actual missiles or all of the above? Or what are they looking for? I, I don't want to get into a lot of detail. Basically, they're looking for ways to help them advance their program. Uh, their ICBM program from the technology from Russia, isn't that right? To either manufacture rockets? That's that, what the Secretary spoke right? about yesterday, yeah. SS-18s. Yes, Can Patrick. You lay out the uh, process for selecting a new CNO in terms of going from Dalton to Perry to the White House, sort of a time frame a little bit. Um, one, one participant you have to include, of course, is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in that, in that chain. Um, the first thing I can say about it is that we hope it will be fast. The Secretary hopes to move as, as quickly as he can. Uh, I look for a recommendation to the President in days rather than weeks. I can't quantify how many days, which is going to be your next question. Um, he. Um, uh, Many, if not all, of the Navy four stars are in town now, and uh, uh, he will uh, have an opportunity to chat with some of them. Certainly the Secretary of the Navy will, and uh, over the next few days I expect the Secretary of the Navy and the Chairman and the Secretary to try to sit down and, and reach a consensus on, on what to do and send the recommendation on to the White House. 
but um, this is uh, really has not uh, nothing uh, nothing uh, particularly uh, the, the process won't really begin in earnest until about now. They wanted to wait until after the memorial service, and as you know, that just ended within the hour. So uh, there, there will probably be just starting out. Will there be a release of the suicide note to the Navy? Um, that's really for the Navy to uh, determine, uh, and you should keep in touch with them about that. Yes? Uh, is there any update to the status of the B-2 fleet? I'm sorry. The B-2 fleet? Um, not that I have for you now. Um, okay. Uh, the Air Force has a release they can give you. Yes? Um, it's been a month since the President went to Japan and made that declaration about the security, new security uh, declaration between U.S. and Japan. Is there any progress in past this month, um, like the issues or the frameworks? to capitalize this? Um, not that I'm aware of, but we'll check. There could well be. They were going to set up working groups, uh, Japan and the United States, and start working on this much the same way they worked on the Okinawa issue. And um, I'm just not aware of what the progress has been. But we'll check and see if we can, if we can report uh, back to you. Is the meeting next week in Honolulu, uh, Hawaii, is that the, that working group? Um, I, I'm, I, Again, I just have not followed this closely enough to answer those questions with any clarity, any certainty. So if you just check with uh, DDI, they'll be able to get back to you. Yes? On the former Soviet missile technology in China, can you put a date on the U.S. day march to Moscow and Kiev? Yeah, within the last 30 to 45 days. Uh, you got anything new on the... On the uh, Ron Brown crash. Uh, Air Force had hoped to bring us to some kind of closure on by the end of this month. Uh, well, of course, we're still uh, some time away from the end of the month, so I wouldn't um, uh, I, I wouldn't rush to judgment until the Air Force has completed its investigation. They're still aiming for around the end of the month. So um, hasn't gotten a report on no, he has not. I'd say it's uh, about two weeks off. Yes. The, um, could you give me a few words about the meeting of um, Mr. Perry with the Filipino uh, defense minister? Um, I'm afraid I was not at the meeting, but we'll get you a report. We'll get you an account of what happened. If you speak over here to Colonel Kennett, he'll be able to uh, get you an account of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.